I invite you to turn your Bibles with me to Luke chapter 10, verse 13. Luke chapter 10, verse 13, and then like last week, it's the same verse as last week, but... Uh, Luke 10, 19. What? I said 13? Oh, sorry about that. Luke 10, 19. <laughs> I misspoke. Luke 10, verse 19. Again, it's the same verse as last week, but uh, we're kind of using this verse as kind of a springboard for our subject matter this morning. Luke 10, verse 19. Behold, I've given you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. Let us give thanks to the Lord for these words and ask him to speak to us through these words this morning. Father God, we thank you for these words that you've given to us. We ask you now to speak to us again. Open our ears to hear from you. Open our eyes to see you. And give us the courage to put into practice what you teach us this morning. For these things we pray in your name, Lord Jesus. Amen. I had a video clip to play for this morning, but I decided not to use it. I'll just explain it instead. The reason being is there's some foul language in it. And uh, it's kind of a funny scene. It's, it's two guys playing with swords, very sharp swords, swinging them around in the backyard. One doing a pretty good job with swinging the sword around. And the second guy all of a sudden taking his sword, swinging them around and actually accidentally slicing both of his arms. Pretty bad actions on his part, isn't it? <laughs> it's kind of a sign to show that he's not a master of the sword. <laughs> this morning we're going to be talking about, in a way, of mastering the authority that God gives us. Not that we master it, it's that what, the work that God does in and through us as he gives us his authority. But it's important for us to understand that we are to use, and how we're to use the authority that God gives us. And this morning we wrap up our series on the authority of God and what authority He gives us. Uh, over the first three weeks of this series, we looked first two Sundays at the authority that God has. What is the authority that God has? And as we know through His Word, and as we see through His power displayed through all creation, that God is all-powerful. He has all authority. And then the second Sunday, we looked at the Father giving his authority to Jesus, the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. And last week, we looked at who does God give his authority to. This morning, as Christians, we'll look at how can we use the authority that God gives us. It's pretty important for us to understand that, because if we don't understand that, then how are we to use God's authority, Right? I remember thinking when I was a younger pastor in some churches I pastored in, I was learning to make certain decisions and certain actions because it's like when I, I don't know what authority I have. Can I make certain decisions? Will I be overstepping my bounds if I don't have that authority in the church? And so it's important for us, the same idea for us as Christians, as we know God has given us his authority to do his work, how are we to use that authority? And to know how we are to exercise it. In Matthew 28, verse 18, Jesus said this to his disciples, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. These are the words that Jesus gives just before he ascends to heaven. And sends a few more words yet, but the key words here, all authority. Jesus has all authority. The Greek word here for authority is exousia, which means a state of control over something. So it's to be able to control something or manipulate something. It also means the potential or resource to command, control, or govern. And thirdly, the right to control or command. I think that last definition is important. Because it again speaks of the right to control or command. The authority God gives us is the right to control or to command certain things. 
So it's important for us to know that. Again, it's understanding that it's not our power and authority, but it is God's power and authority. So the first point this morning for us to understand is this. We are to use the spiritual authority that we are given. We are to use the spiritual authority that we are given. We are all given this authority by God as Christians. The moment you come to faith in Jesus Christ, there are certain authorities that God has given us, and we are to use that authority. Again, Luke 10, verse 19, that I read earlier to you. Behold, I have given you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall hurt you. Now, this verse, when it speaks of scorpions, serpents and scorpions, I don't think it's necessarily meaning really snakes and scorpions, but it has more to do with spiritual warfare. Now, certainly we can tread on serpents and scorpions, but it seems to me that this has to do with a spiritual thing because even in Revelations, when it talks about serpents and scorpions too, it seems to be something that's more demonic. So it speaks to the authority God gives us in the spiritual realm, which we'll talk about more in a moment. Then in Acts 1 verse 8, Jesus again says to his disciples before he sends to heaven, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Jesus here says to his disciples, I'm going to give you the Holy Spirit after I ascend to heaven. And through the Holy Spirit, you will receive power to do the work he has called us to do. As we see at the moment of pa- the day of Pentecost, we see that the Holy Spirit baptizes the disciples. Uh, we call that the term baptism of the Holy Spirit. And some of the signs we see through the New Testament about this is signs like tongues and boldness to preach the gospel, prophecy, and praising God. Now, it doesn't mean that if someone has the baptism of the Holy Spirit that they're doing all four of those all the time. But the main thing that God uses that whole baptism of the Holy Spirit is to spread the good news of the gospel. But yet, it is the authority that God may give believers in certain situations and times to do God's work. So then, how are we to use this spiritual authority that God has given us? Well, first, A, we're to use it by faith faith. We talked about this a little bit last Sunday, that we must use authority that God has given us by faith. So it's good to kind of recap this and remember this. It is something we must do by faith. Now, that's not to say that it is a health and wealth thing where we name it and claim it, not at all. Now, God's Word does speak to some things that we're to claim, but the, the kind of theology that talks about name it and claim it all the time is not correct. And just because something doesn't work out doesn't mean that you lack faith. I've heard of some people who say that, well, that person wasn't healed because they didn't have faith. No, they had the faith. They asked Christ for healing and maybe came to the church and to the elders and asked for healing. But maybe they didn't receive healing because maybe it wasn't their timing and God's choosing that timing to heal them. It wasn't necessarily a matter of faith. But we must have faith to exercise the authority that God has given us. John 14, verse 12 through 14 says, Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do. And greater works than these will he do, because I am going to the Father. Whatever you ask in my name, this I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. So this verse speaks about having faith. You have to have faith to come to Jesus and ask him to do these things for us. Then Matthew 19, verse 20. He said to them, Because of your little faith, for truly I say to you, if you have faith like a grain of a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, Move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. Also, 
In Matthew 21, verse 21 to 22, Jesus answered them, Truly I say to you, if you have faith and do not doubt, you will not only do what has been done to the fig tree, but even if you say to this mountain, be taken up and thrown into the sea, it will happen. And whatever you ask in prayer, you will receive if you have faith. Even further, Luke 17, verse 6, the Lord said, if you had faith like a grain of a mustard seed, you could say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. All these verses speak to how we are called to have faith when we use the authority that God gives us. That we can speak in faith because of the power that God has given us, and it will happen. I'm not saying that we should go marching around and go to the mountains and say, mountain, move from here and fill in the ocean. I'm not saying for us to do that. But there are certain things that God does call us and ask us to do. And so we must go and do it by faith that God has given us the authority to do it. Second part to this B is to proclaim Matthew 16, verse 15 through 18. We're going to look at verse 15 and 16 for a moment here. Go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to the whole creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. So God has given us the authority to proclaim. To proclaim what? The good news of Jesus Christ, the gospel, what Christ has done for each one of us. I remember having a conversation with, with a person one time. It was actually during Heritage Days here, and some of you might remember the story, but one Christian came across, as I was sharing the gospel to people, I was doing open-air open preaching <coughs> and cold contact evangelism, and, and one gentleman stopped me and said, you can't do that. You have to earn the right to share the gospel. And I pulled out my New Testament and handed it, and reached to hand it to him. He didn't take it, but... I said to him, as I handed the Bible to him, I said, show me where in the Bible it tells us that we have to earn the right to share the gospel. Brothers and sisters, it doesn't say that. Christ has already told us, you have the authority to go and do this. He tells us, he commands us to go into all the world and preach the gospel. We don't have to earn the right because God has already given us the authority to do so. So we have the authority to go and proclaim to share the gospel. Then see, we're to use the authority that God has given us to cast out demons. Mark 16, verse 17. And these signs will accompany those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. Now this sounds a little bit like a scary one, doesn't it? Spiritual warfare sometimes sounds like a scary thing. But it doesn't, isn't really a scary thing when we understand the authority that God has given us. That God has given us that authority to cast out demons out of people. Now we need to understand how to deal with that still. What is God's word saying? How do we handle those situations? But this is a whole other conversation for another time. But it's important for us to know that God has given us that authority to cast out demons. Then D. We are to use the authority that God has given us to heal people as well. Mark 16, verse 18. The second half of verse 18. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Now that doesn't mean necessarily that we just go walk up to every given person saying, be healed. It has to be a leading of the Holy Spirit to guide us. I remember one time we were in a prayer gathering time uh, when we were pastoring another church. And at the end of, end of our prayer time, one person said, I sense God saying we need to pray for my wife, Sherry, for healing for her. And so we stopped. And he prayed, and a couple of those prayed for, for my wife. He didn't know what she needed healing for, but he just sensed that God was saying we were to pray for her. Well, that week, Sherry had, uh, I think it was that week that you, you had a, a lab test that week. And after that lab test, 
we found out that some of the numbers that Sherry had for her liver was showing that her liver was healed. And she had some numbers that were showing that her liver was damaged before. Uh, and we don't know why that was the case, but our do her doctor was monitoring it very closely. And then after this person prayed for Sherry, her liver was healed. So yes, we can lay hands on the sick and they will be healed. But again, listen to the Holy Spirit to guide us as to who to pray for and when. Also, authority God has given us is to bind and loose. That is E, to bind and loose. 2 Corinthians verse 10 verse 4 says this, For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but have divine power to destroy strongholds. Again, this would need a whole other sermon on its own to talk about because strongholds is that spiritual warfare thing still too, and it's important to understand that, but how to use that authority. G, we also have the authority to destroy arguments. 2 Corinthians 10, verse 5, we destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God. <coughs> this goes back to the authority that God has given us to proclaim. But we're also given the authority to destroy arguments that are against the knowledge of God. Now, how we do that is so important. We shouldn't be argumentative when we have arguments with people who do not believe that God exists or believe something other than we understand that God teaches us in his word. But we are to destroy those arguments that are contrary to God by using the word of God, by lovingly speaking truth to them. Now there may be a point where we need to use some sharper words sometimes if they don't get it, but that's always a last resort. But it always must be done in love. Because we love those who are lost. Because we love those other Christians too who may be in error. And to lead each person to the truth of God and his word. And then H. Take every thought captive. Verse 5 of 2 Corinthians verse 10. And take every thought captive to obey Christ. I think this is one of the most significant of the authorities that God has given us. Why? Because every single Christian is going to be tempted by something at some point. And it's so good to know that God has given us the authority that when that temptation comes, when that, that thought comes, we can take it captive and say, no, I'm not going to dwell on that thought. I'm going to choose not to think that way anymore and change my thoughts to focus on God instead. That way, when we take those thoughts captive, we do not sin then. And so we're encouraged as Christians to use that authority that God has given us. When that disturbing thought, when that temptation comes to mind, don't sit there and dwell on it. Take it captive right away and say, I'm not going to think this way. But to think on the things that God has told me to, the things that it was whatever pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is of good report, to think on those things. Then I, the authority that God has given us to, is to conquer the enemy. I love this verse, Romans 8.37. It's one of my life verses. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors. Through him who loved us. This verse, again, speaks to the authority that God gives us. That's through him because he loves us. We are more than conquerors. We do not overcome the enemy. We are more than that. And it's exciting and good to know that God has given us that authority. And J, God has given us authority to build up. Often conversations in the last while between Sherry and I have been talking about things of how our words carry spiritual weight. And how we need to be careful not to speak words that are words of curses against ourselves or against others. But only words that build up. That speaks life into things. And so we as Christians too are called to build up. 
And that's part of the authority that God has given us, is to speak words that build others up. 2 Corinthians 10 verse 8 says, For even if I boast a little too much of our authority, which the Lord gave to build you up, and not for destroying you, I will not be ashamed. The Apostle Paul again says he has words here that God has given him with authority, but they're words to build up the church in Corinth. Same thing for us. God has given us words to speak, but there are words to build up, never to tear down. Likewise, a few chapters later in chapter 13, verse 10 of 2 Corinthians, For this reason I write these things, while I'm away from you, that when I come, I may not have to be severe in my use of the authority that the Lord has given me for building up and not for tearing down. It's sad to hear sometimes of some Christians that will speak really meanly and awfully towards other Christians. I heard one person said that, well, God gave me the spiritual gift of criticism. Um, there's no verse that speaks to that being a spiritual gift. God has already given us words to build up, never to tear down. God has given us that authority to build up, but he has not given us the authority to tear down. People, that is. Yes, we destroy arguments that we talked about a moment ago, but there's a difference between destroying arguments and destroying people. Two very different things. So we are to build people up in love in Christ. My brothers and sisters, God has given us authority. He has given us authority to do all these things we have looked at here this morning. That God has given us power over the evil one. That God has, that God has given us power and authority in the spiritual realm but also in the natural realm as we speak to people to build each other up. I started this sermon when talking about a gentleman who was swinging swords around and cut himself. Obviously not a master of the sword. I also saw other video clips, though, of people who could use a sword masterfully. Swinging around, never touching themselves. There could be an apple on a, person's, on a person's head and they can swing the sword and hit that apple with precision and not touch that other person. That takes mastery of it. Same is true with the authority God gives us. But we don't have to do it on our own strength. We do it in the strength and ability that God gives us to use and wield the authority that God has given us to do His good work. Do you feel weak as a Christian? I don't know about you, but at times I've felt weak sometimes. But know this, that God has given you great authority. And he is with you always and equips you with his authority to do his good work. So use the authority that God has given you. Listen to the Holy Spirit's guidance to use his authority. And if you do, God will do great and amazing things through you. After all, Jesus did say too that he uses the weak to shame the strong. That he uses the wise to show the foolish that they were foolish. After all, again, think about all the different people that God has used throughout time. I think of Joshua, one of my favorite characters in the Bible. Three times God had to say to him, be strong and very courageous. And then the nation of Israel said it to him twice too. He must have had an inferior, inferiority complex. But yet God used him to do amazing things. Probably just as amazing, if not more amazing, than Moses did. Moses, there's another one too. A man who said, God, you can't use me. I can't speak very well, so you can't use me. Choose someone else. And yet God still used him to lead the nation of Israel out of Egypt. 
Think of Paul. In God's Word, when Paul writes, he talks about how he's afraid to sometimes speak towards people. Mainly because he doesn't want to speak harshly to others. But we also know too that as Paul's preaching in one situation, a man fell asleep, fell out to the, the building he was in and died. Now God used Paul to raise him from the dead in that moment again. But he was, must not have been a very good orator. And yet God still used Paul to plant many churches throughout the Mediterranean. Think of Mary. Someone who seemed insignificant. And yet God used her to bring our Savior into this world in human form. Know this, my brothers and sisters. No matter what you think about yourself, God can and will use you to do amazing things. So allow God to work in you and through you. Allow God to use authority He has given you to do His good work. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you so much that you are a great God. That you have all authority. And we thank you and praise you, O oh God, that you would choose to use us to do your work too. We thank you for the blessing that you've given us to do this work. And Lord, we were blessed to see the fruits of the work that you do through us. Lord, we want to give you praise and glory. As we go out and share your good news, your gospel to those who are lost, Lord, whether it be friend, family, neighbor, or co-worker, maybe even a stranger on the street, we thank you and praise you now too, Lord, for the blessing to see some of these people come to faith. Lord, when someone is coming in faith in you and growing, as you use us to disciple them and encourage them in the faith, Lord, thank you for the blessing that we have of you using us. And Lord, when there's amazing things that you use us to do, that only you can do, we give you praise and glory and thank you that you were willing to use us. We thank you and praise you, Lord God. Lord, may we remember from this day forward that you have given us your authority to do your work. So Lord, we don't need to go in the spirit of timidity or fear but we can go out in the spirit of power and of a sound mind. Lord God, even as we leave this place the moments ahead, as soon as we walk out these doors, Lord God, may you use us to those you put in front of us. Thank you, Lord Jesus. For these things we pray in your name, Lord Jesus. Amen.